Let's study 9th standard ICSC physics, chapter 6, heat and energy flow. First of all, let's understand the concept of heat, which is a form of energy. You see, every body is made up of molecules and the molecules have random motion, which is the kinetic energy of the molecules of the body. This is nothing but heat energy. So the heat energy is the internal kinetic as well as potential energy of the molecules of the body, the internal energy. Even ice has heat energy because you can cool it further. If its temperature is zero, you can decrease it to minus 10 degrees Celsius. You can decrease the temperature to minus 200 degrees Celsius. In fact, the lowest possible temperature is minus 273 degrees Celsius. At that point, which is called absolute zero, we can say that there is no heat energy. Otherwise, every object in the universe has heat energy. In fact, no object can reach the absolute zero temperature. So, when we touch a hot object, we feel the heat because that heat energy, the kinetic energy, is getting transferred to our skin and we perceive it. So clearly, heat is indeed a form of energy. So it is measured in the SI unit of Joule, which is equal to 10 raised to 7 erg in the CGS unit. Another unit especially for heat energy is calories. One calorie is 4.18 Joule. Now the temperature of a body gives us an indication of heat, but they are quite different. Number one difference is obviously the, the units. Heat is measured in Joule, whereas temperature, the SI unit is Kelvin. But the concepts are different because heat is a form of energy and temperature is simply the indication of the total kinetic energy of the molecules of a substance. It simply helps us to determine in what direction will heat flow because heat always flows from a body at a higher temperature to a body at a lower temperature. The amount of heat depends on temperature but it also depends on two more things, mass and the material of the body. Temperature, on the other hand, is simply the average kinetic energy of its molecules. The amount of heat of a substance can be measured by the principle of calorimetry, which you will study in 10th standard, whereas the temperature is measured by a thermometer. The fifth point is not a point of difference, it's just a note. That means if two bodies have the same amount of heat, say 50 joule and 50 joule, still their temperatures may be different because you see heat depends not only on temperature but also on mass and material. And on the other hand, two bodies which have the same temperature, let's say 40 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius, they may have different amount of heat. A swimming pool at 40 degrees Celsius will have more heat than a bucket filled with water at 40 degrees Celsius because the mass of the swimming pool is more. Now heat can be added and subtracted. That means if I have two objects of 50 joule each heat energy and if I mix them, then the total heat is 100 joule. But we can't say that for temperature. If two objects have a temperature of 50 Kelvin each, if I mix them, the temperature would become 100 Kelvin. Now, how to convert degree Celsius into Kelvin? Well, simply add 273. That means that 0 degree Celsius is nothing but 273 Kelvin. And 100 degree Celsius is 373 Kelvin. There is another formula to convert centigrade into Fahrenheit. Now, let's talk about thermal expansion. We know that whenever we heat something, the substance expands. If it's a thin wire, then only its length will increase, so that is called linear expansion. If it's a thin sheet, then only its area will increase, that is length and breadth, two-dimensional, so that is called superficial expansion. And if it's a three-dimensional object, then the length, breadth, height will increase, that is called cubical expansion. For solids, we can have either of the three expansions. But for liquids and gases, we ha only have cubical expansion, anomalous expansion of water. Imagine we have water at 10 degrees Celsius and we cool it. When we cool it, it contracts. Every substance, when cooled, contracts because the molecules come closer to each other. Its kinetic energy decreases, the intermolecular attraction increases. So whenever you cool something, it contracts, its volume decreases, its density increases. If volume, if the volume decreases, then the molecules are closer to each other, it's more compact. So it's denser. So when you decrease the temperature of water, from 10 degrees Celsius to 8, then 6, then 4, you will see that the volume is decreasing, it's contracting. But after 4 degrees Celsius, below it, if you decrease it to 2, 1, 0 degrees Celsius, common sense would say that the volume should decrease further, it should contract further. 
but common sense is not so common in nature something surprising happens it starts expanding it's cooling down and yet the intermolecular distance increases this anomaly is seen very rarely water is one exception there are a few more exceptions so below 4 degrees celsius it keeps on expanding its volume increases in fact after it freezes at 0 degrees celsius you will notice that the ice floats on water on cold water because the volume of ice is more than the the volume of the same mass of water means its density is less than the density of water the density of water is maximum at 4 degrees celsius because the volume is minimum so if i draw a density graph so this graph is for is double ticked so you have to practice that even this graph is double ticked you can see that as you cool it from 10 degrees celsius to 4 degrees celsius its density is increasing and its maximum density is 1 g per centimeter cube at 4 degrees celsius after that it starts expanding so its density decreases and that is why ice floats on water and this expansion of water here the volume increasing this expansion of water between 4 to 0 degrees celsius is called anomalous expansion of water the converse is also true if ice melts then when the ice melts it starts contracting when you heat ice its volume decreases till 4 degrees celsius now this can be proved with the help of the hopes experiment so here we have a setup we have water and it is surrounded by a freezing mixture which keeps the temperature very low uh, around minus 20 degrees celsius it's a mixture of ice and salt to cool the water inside the beaker let's say initially the water was at 12 degrees celsius so we have thermometer 1 and thermometer 2 and we'll observe the changes in the temperature and plot a graph here now initially what happens is the temperature of thermometer 1 does not change it remains as it is 12 degrees celsius whereas the temperature of this thermometer it shows a decrease that means the lower water is cooling faster which makes sense because when this ice mixture this freezing mixture absorbs all the heat from the water the water cools down 12 11 10 9 8 10, and cool water is heavier cool water is denser so it sinks at the bottom the top water is still at 12 degrees celsius that won't become cold because water is a poor conductor of heat it gets heated or cooled only by convection and here what is happening is that the cold cold water is just settling down so the lower water it becomes cool but that continues only till 4 degrees celsius after that it does not continue to cool further so slowly this entire water becomes 4 degrees celsius now the top water starts cooling now the heat from the top water is escaping and slowly even the top portion reaches 4 degrees celsius so now the entire water column is at 4 degrees celsius see now it even that is at 4 degrees celsius and even this one is at 4 degrees celsius now what now the temperature has to drop further now surprisingly the temperature of the upper part of the water will continue decreasing 4 3 2 1 0 because below 4 degrees celsius the water's density is lesser it will float water at 3 to 1 degree celsius float they are lighter than the water at 4 degrees celsius remember water at 4 degrees celsius is the densest and it is always at the bottom and the cold water on top is always at a temperature less than 4 degrees celsius say 3 to 1 0 degree celsius so you will notice that this thermometer reaches 0 degree celsius but not this one that is why the graph reached 0 degree celsius but this graph is still at 4 this proves anomalous expansion of water and this has a significant consequence even in a lake if you notice outside the atmospheric temperature is below 0 degree celsius it's freezing cold but the 4 degree celsius water being densest is at the bottom and the upper layers have 3 2 1 and 0 degree celsius water which are less dense and which float and thankfully the layer of ice on top of it is a poor conductor of heat that means it will prevent the heat energy inside from escaping out otherwise the whole lake would have frozen and all the aquatic plants and animals would have died but they would survive because they are adapted to live in 4 degree celsius water comfortably another consequence of anomalous expansion is that if you have water pipes in very cold countries and the water pipes are carrying water now during severe winter the water freezes and whenever water freezes it expands if it expands and there is no space inside the pipes the pipes can burst in winter season 
in fact even before freezing into ice the pipes can burst because water at 3 degrees celsius 2 degrees celsius and 1 degree celsius and even 0 degree celsius have a greater volume than the water at 4 degree celsius similarly in a plant's leaf veins which has xylem which carries water if the temperature of the water goes below 4 degrees celsius then the water will expand and the veins will burst and the plant will die that is why the farmer fills the entire field with water he floods it with water this will prevent the freezing the frosting of the plants that's because of the high latent heat of fusion of water which you will study in 10th standard hi students this is aj sir if you like this video press the like button if you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures email me or message me on instagram check the description for more information